After blasting players into outer space, the Call of Duty franchise returns to the gritty earthbound roots of World War II that originally made it an essential video game franchise, and we're returning to our roots with the scoop on the latest COD installment. Hi, I'm Alpha Lance with The Leaderboard, and we're here to check out 107 facts about Call of Duty World War II. Let's get started. <laughs> Call of Duty originally launched in 2003 as a first-person shooter set during World War II. It allowed players to fight as the Americans, the British, or the Soviets. Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare was the first installment to break from the World War II setting and place the action in modern times. Subsequent titles took the battle into the future and then into outer space. Three studios, Infinity Ward, Treyarch, and Sledgehammer Games, had been taking turns developing the games. In 2015, Activision confirmed that Sledgehammer Games would be developing the next Call of Duty for release in 2017. Sledgehammer Games had previously developed 2014's Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and co-developed 2011's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. The company was founded by the people behind the creepy sci-fi horror game Dead Space. Activision Chief Operating Officer Thomas Tipple acknowledged that the futuristic setting of 2016's Call of Duty Infinite Warfare had received many complaints from fans of the franchise. Although sales for that installment were disappointing, Tipple says he doesn't regret taking a risk and sending the game into outer space. However, it was decided that Call of Duty needed to go back to its roots, with traditional boots-on-the-ground combat once again taking center stage. Sledgehammer Games began working on a Call of Duty game set in Vietnam to be called Fog of War, but that project was put on hold and inevitably cancelled. Activision CEO Eric Hirschberger thought it was the right time to return to World War II, and so they did. Call of Duty World War II is the 14th installment in the Call of Duty series. Although it's the fifth main World War II title in the series, it's the first Call of Duty since 2008's Call of Duty World at War to be set in World War II. Sledgehammer Games co-founder Michael Condry called it a great honor to depict World War II. He wanted the story to depict the war in a way that would remind people that we should never allow something like this to happen again. Condry was inspired by the camaraderie depicted on HBO back in 2001 in their hit show, Sex and the City. I mean, Band of Brothers. Technically Band of Brothers, but Sex and the City, I guess, kind of has camaraderie. Condry said that because we're running out of people who remember World War II, he wanted this game to tell their story, so it remains in our consciousness. Sounds like a lofty goal, but then again, it's definitely easier to get a kid to play a video game than read a history book. Sledgehammer Games co-founder and Call of Duty World War II game director Glenn Schofield has a personal connection to the military. His grandfather fought in World War II, and his uncle was in Vietnam. He keeps his grandfather's bronze star and purple heart in a glass case in his office. Talking to veterans gave the developers the idea to focus on a smaller squad of characters, and to leave plenty of room for quieter moments between the horrors of war. Sledgehammer wanted the narrative to echo the motto of the original Call of Duty, which was, In war, no one fights alone. To help make the game historically accurate, they consulted World War II historian Martin Morgan. Morgan had previously served as the historical advisor for the game Medal of Honor Airborne. Martin was upset when he saw Saving Private Ryan and noticed that the wrong sniper rifle was being used, with the wrong scope, no less. Supposedly, the correct rifle was brought on set, but Steven Spielberg rejected it for not looking cinematic enough. As part of their research, Sledgehammer Games retraced the steps that real soldiers took through France, Belgium, and Germany. The trip included a trek through Germany's Hurtger Forest, where they surveyed the scars left behind by the fierce battle that took place there. The Battle of Hurtger Forest holds the record for the longest land engagement in the history of the U.S. Army. There were 4,500 American casualties in just the first three weeks, and by the time the fighting ended months later, over 33,000 were killed, wounded, or missing. Call of Duty World War II takes place in the European theater, near the end of the war from 1944 to 1945. The game starts off on D-Day, the most iconic battle of the war. Condry points out that it's been 19 years since the movie Saving Private Ryan depicted the storming of the beach at Normandy, which means there's a new generation that hasn't seen a major recreation of that event in their lifetime. The D-Day invasion has been depicted in four Call of Duty games, most memorably as the final battle of the British campaign in Call of Duty 2. Art director Joseph Salud went to Normandy Beach on the anniversary of D-Day so he could better imagine what the color of the sky and the size of the waves might have been like on that day in 1944. Schofield said they wrote more plot than they did for other games. He wanted the first couple of minutes of the campaign mode to feel like you're watching a movie. 
The main storyline in campaign mode follows the 1st Infantry Division. The 1st Infantry Division began in World War I and is the oldest continuously serving division in the regular army. It's also known as the Fighting First or the Big Red One after its shoulder patch. The main character you play as is a 19-year-old private named Roland Red Daniels. Red is a Texan with a pregnant fiancé back home. Daniel's first name and nickname are an homage to Glenn Schofield's father, who died during the making of Call of Duty World War II. Red's best friend, Robert Zussman, is a Jew from Chicago. The game tackles the issue of anti-Semitism by showing that some members of the squad aren't comfortable with Zussman's heritage. Actor Josh Dumel makes his video game debut as hard-nosed veteran Sergeant William Pearson, although an argument can be made that his role in the Transformers movie is a lot like acting in a video game. The game also addresses the Holocaust. Senior creative director Brett Robbins said in an interview, Some very, very dark things happened during this conflict, and it felt wrong for us to ignore that. The game doesn't only focus on Americans. Another playable character is a woman in the French Resistance named Rousseau. She appears to be based on a real Allied intelligence agent named Jean Rousseau. Prominent non-playable characters include a German family and two sisters, a British officer named Crowley, and an African-American officer from another regiment. While there are some recognizable faces among the cast, there's no big names such as Kevin Spacey tying everything together like in Advanced Warfare. The goal was to avoid distracting from the authenticity and to keep the focus on the characters in your squad. Changes were incorporated to make gameplay more realistic. There's no unlimited sprint this time, and you can't boost jump or wall run. You have to get health and ammo thrown to you from your squad mates. You can't just hide behind a wall and wait to heal like your Wolverine. Although, that being said, a Wolverine game set in World War II does sound pretty awesome. Part of the realistic approach means maintaining an atmosphere of dread. Even though you get to feel the triumph of liberating Paris, things quickly go to hell again. There are parts of the game where you can't shoot your way out of problems. During these moments, the most heroic thing you can do is survive. One of the game's most dramatic moments, according to its creators, is when one soldier punches another. It doesn't sound like a little fisticuffs would be a big deal in the middle of a modern war, but in this instance, trust us, that moment is really insane. For your battle in the city of Aachen, you're placed in a tank. This is purposefully done so you'll be destroying buildings. In the real battle, the beautiful and historic city of Aachen was 80% destroyed. Schofield wanted the game to establish a distinction between Germans and Nazis, in order to make it clear that there was a human side on both sides. The scene where a military train crashes is one of the biggest set pieces in the history of the Call of Duty franchise. Morgan gave Schofield four different historically accurate trains to choose from. That was narrowed down to two choices before Schofield decided which type of train was the best one to trash. Schofield said the action in World War II was big because 200 pounds bombs were being dropped on 14th century buildings, which means when things blew up, they really exploded. The sound design and visuals immediately throw players into the gritty tone of the game as explosions and gunfire hail down upon your landing craft. By the time you're able to bail out, the sea is stained with blood. The entire sound design department went to Louisiana to record audio capture of the World War II weapons that Morgan owns. Weapons featured in the game include the M1 Garand, the STG-44, and the MG-42. Art director Salud was inspired by the use of natural light in the movie The Revenant. To recreate that effect, he used photogrammetry, which is the process of photographing in realistic lighting conditions and then extracting the finer data points to create a digital 3D rendition. But enough about realism, let's get to the Nazi zombies. That's right, the co-op mode brings back Nazi zombies for the first time since 2008's Call of Duty World at War. However, these aren't your grandpa's Nazi zombies. Activision's John Horsley said that they wanted to explore what it would be like if instead of following the typical virus origin story, these zombies were instead engineered and built as weapons of war. Creative director Cameron Dayton claims that this is the scariest version of zombies you've ever seen, which is fitting for a game designed by the guys behind Dead Space. The Nazi Zombies mission takes you through a snowy Bavarian village in Middleburg, Germany, where you're searching for stolen works of art as part of the Monuments, Fine Arts, and Archive Squad, aka the Monuments Men. Although dodging the flesh-hungry undead seems like a more pressing issue than tracking down a Rembrandt. The Nazi Zombies mission is designed to encourage a lot of four-way teamwork. There are new ways for items to be shared and used to encourage the co-op nature of the game. It's like they say, teamwork makes the not-being-eaten-by-Nazi-Zombies dream work. 
The Zombies cast features Doctor Who's David Tennant as Drosten Hind, Daredevil's Elodie Young as Olivia Durant, Catherine Winnick from Vikings as Marie Fisher, Mission Impossible's Ving Rhames as Jeffrey Potts, and Udu Kier as Dr. Peter Straub. Elodie Young's father and grandfather were actually part of the French Resistance, which made her feel like this was important for her to take a part like this. Befitting the darker tone, these actors were directed to show fear in their vocalizations instead of the triumphant shouting you typically hear in a video game. Call of Duty World War II introduces a new narrative multiplayer game simply named War. Sledgehammer describes it as a series of objective-driven conflicts. War Mode is a 6 on 6 match that has one side defending with the other side attacking. Each player's overall stats are calculated minus the deaths. Because score streaks are deactivated and there's no kill death ratio, you are pushed to work as a team. Call of Duty's trademark kill cam, which was previously designed to replay the final death of every multiplayer match, has been upgraded. Now it only shows the death that the game decided was the most impressive. The create a class system used in other Call of Duty games has been replaced by a feature called Divisions. You can choose from five iconic World War II divisions. Each of them comes with its own specific basic combat training, division training, and weapon skills. This replaces the Perks modifying system which was popularized by Treyarch, and the five divisions are Armored, Mountain, Expeditionary, Infantry, and Airborne. The armor division is described on the Activision blog as bringing the heaviest firepower and armed to the teeth with explosives and LMG firepower. Their division skill is Bipod, which allows you to protect territory by mounting your machine gun. The mountain division is described as death from a distance, with their sharpshooter focus and sniper rifles. Their division skill is Sharpshooter, which allows you to block out your surroundings and in return acquire aim assist and enemy names. The expeditionary division is described as packing heat and well equipped with incendiary rounds and and shotguns. Their division skill is incendiary shells, which allows you to have shotgun shells which spark flames and burn enemies to death. The infantry division is described as extremely versatile and equipped for mid to long range rifle engagements and up close and personal bayonet charges. Their division skill is bayonet charge, which is about being well trained in the use of the bayonets and therefore more of a threat at all ranges. The airborne division is described as the first to the fight, moves fast, and stays quiet, armed with undetectable silenced SMGs. Their division skill is Suppressor, which allows you to hide muzzle flashes and prevent gunfire from appearing on enemy minimaps, but reduces range of weapon. Time to dive into some music facts. The music that plays during the main menu was recorded by an orchestra in Nashville, Tennessee. The music used in the official trailer is from the Symphony of Sorrowful Songs, second movement, by Henrik Goretzky. This symphony actually contains three movements. The first one is a 15th century folk song where the Virgin Mary speaks to Jesus on the cross. The second is an inscription on the wall of a German prison where a teenager who is about to be executed asks her mother not to cry. The third movement is a mother lamenting the loss of her son in war. Sorrowful songs indeed. In multiplayer, you have the option of seeing things from the German perspective. Although swastikas are used by Axis powers during the campaign mode, they have been taken out of the multiplayer mode in the attempt to avoid glorifying the symbol. In the German release of the game, swastikas are not even visible in the campaign mode. Swastikas are censored for every game released in Germany. During multiplayer, you can depict yourself as a diverse character, even if you're fighting on the Axis side. That means you can play as characters like a black female Nazi. Conjury has pushed back against critics who are upset by this option due to historical inaccuracy, saying, The divisions represent you in the game. They're your choices. Whatever gender or nationality you feel represented by, it's all about you going into war. This is the first Call of Duty to include a social area. Players can hang out in a central hub called Headquarters. Sledgehammer Games describes Headquarters as an off-the-front-line space, which functions as both a social and activity-driven space that really showcases and celebrates your achievements and your personality. The developer has compared this social area to World of Warcraft's Orgrimmar. Headquarters includes a one-on-one -on -one player versus player area to settle grudges, and there's also a firing range for testing guns or engaging in shooting contests. According to multiplayer producer Mike Miha, there's even a ceremony in Headquarters where you can go and talk to the general on the cliff and everyone sees that. Conjury wanted to foster the kind of social experiences players found in the 2012 PlayStation game Journey. There are thousands of stories about strangers forming strong emotional bonds through that game's anonymous co-op mode. The PC version was developed in conjunction with Raven Software. They've made it their goal to win the hearts and minds of the PC community. The Call of Duty franchise has a surprise 
surprisingly low number of active PC players on Steam. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare doesn't even crack the top 100. Sledgehammer Games and Raven Software see Call of Duty World War II as a chance to change that. Raven's CTO, Dwight Lewisher, thinks the World War II setting makes the game very well suited for the PC community in the way some of the recent releases haven't been. Some control tunings have been made that are specific for the PC version. Auto-aim for controllers has been removed and replaced with the option of customizable analog security for each stick, with a separate pair of sensitivity sliders for each stick for when you're aiming down the sights. The Call of Duty World War II multiplayer beta ran from Friday, September 29th to Monday, October October 2nd. PC users could get into the beta for free, but console users had to pre-order the game to get in. Playing the beta gave you access to the beta combat pack, which included a unique helmet, calling card, and emblem. Unfortunately, hackers quickly invaded the beta as users posted several videos of cheaters using aimbots. This is why we can't have nice things. Sledgehammer has pledged to crack down on cheaters, stating that they take a level playing field very seriously, and it is their top priority to monitor this on an ongoing basis. Several tweaks were made based on feedback from the beta. For the console version, UAVs were made much harder to shoot down with rifles. Other changes include the number of Molotov cocktails given during a kill streak being lowered, weapon damage numbers being shifted, and the number of points it takes to activate some kill streaks were changed. The hit sound marker, which goes off when you hit a target, was also also changed in the PC version after feedback from the beta. Changes were made to the map of the bombed out German city of Auken after complaints that the environment was too porous and that made it too difficult to master the map in a way that made it strategic. The developers boarded off a few windows and added more cover placements to reduce the amount of cross lane firing. Condry says one of the lessons they've learned from testing is that the grenades were too strong, even though the grenades' value hadn't changed since the last Call of Duty game. They finally realized the problem was that players in this version couldn't boost away from them or use the evasion mechanic. Changes were also made to other weapons. SMGs had their damage per second and falloff range reduced, the STG-44 recoil was nerfed, and the rate of fires for the M1A1-1911 and the P08 were increased slightly. Devolver Digital made a 93-minute documentary about Call of Duty that they cleverly referred to as a conumentary. It became available on Steam and VOD on September 19, 2017. The film features interviews with developers, fans, pro players, and gaming experts, and traces Call of Duty from its humble beginnings to its growth into a global entertainment franchise. Call of Duty World War II was released on November 3, 2017, and it's available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. The Pro Edition is only available at GameStop. For $99.99, you get the base game, a season pass, a collectible steel book, and additional bonus content. Call of Duty World War II's multiplayer features a blast from the past. The Carenton map, which originally appeared in the first Call of Duty game, and later showed up in the United Offensive Expansion Pack and in Call of Duty 2. The real-life Battle of Carenton took place between June 10th and June 15th, 1944. U.S. forces secured a key victory in the continuing Battle of Normandy when they were able to push the German forces from the small French town. The Carentin map will initially only be available to Season Pass holders. If you don't have one, you might want to start making some friends. A Season Pass costs $50 and also comes with four DLC packs that they'll be releasing in 2018, including new multiplayer maps, new chapters in Nazi Zombies, and all new war missions. All Call of Duty World War II DLC packs will be available 30 days early for the PlayStation 4. Or to put it another way, they'll be on time for the PlayStation 4, but 30 days late for PC and Xbox One. Leaked marketing materials list Call of Duty World War II among the games being made available for the powerful new Xbox One X machine that boasts 4K graphics. The Xbox One X has been given the nickname Project Scorpio, which coincidentally sounds like the name of a mission from World War II. Pittsburgh Steelers players Le'Veon Bell and Alejandro Villanueva appear as characters in headquarters mode. Villanueva is a West Point graduate and former Army Ranger, and they're both huge fans of the Call of Duty franchise. Now, only if we can see that idea go the other direction by sneaking World War II veterans into Madden NFL. Michael Condry says Call of Duty World War II is the most personal and profound game he's ever worked on. Glenn Schofield calls it the best game he's made in his 26-year career, which is high praise coming from the guy who brought you Gex 3, Deep Cover Gecko, and Legacy of Kain, Soul Reaver 2. And that's good to hear since Call of Duty World War II took the developers three years to make. 
Glad they didn't end up hating the finished product. There you have it. Once again, I'm Alpha Lance, and thanks for watching 107 Facts about Call of Duty World War II. Did you play it yet? Did we miss anything? Comment below and let us know. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become a part of the notification squad. And if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and follow the leaderboard for more videos.